Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning on GMSA, a monkeypox vaccine shortage has people going to Canada. In a desperate search for help, we have the latest that's ahead. Let's take a live look out at the Alamo City 77. Now, Mike Osterhage joining us at dark and early today has everything you need to know when it comes to the forecast. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock. It is Sunday. It is August 14th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. So yesterday, Good morning. I didn't see rain. Did you see rain? No, I'm, I'm, I barely saw clouds yesterday. Yeah, we saw I a mean, lot of blue skies. A lot of blue skies. Hot extremely it was like a gross hot though it got did get up to 102 yesterday so that was uh, you can kind of thank in part the load which is moving in here from the gulf of mexico and let's be happy for the folks getting rain i mean we can't you know right. no sour grapes here but uh yeah most of us are not going to be seeing a lot of rain further south you go you go in some cases you're going to be getting too much in the way of rain right now it is uh, warm fairly humid a few clouds hanging around here as of right now and when you look at radar Obviously, nothing is showing up on radar in and around the area. However, go down to the southeast. This is not the day to head down to the coast because you can see some pretty good showers around Corpus Christi, Rockport moving in toward Mathis, and then zoom out just a little bit more, and you can see the center of circulation just about right, just about moving on shore. And what looks like would be a lot of rain, obviously spinning around that, around the counterclockwise rotation. That is definitely the case. However, this thing's going to move almost straight to the west. So yeah, there's the heaviest rain around the center of it. It's lesser amounts further north you go and keep going further north and you just get some of those stragglers. So we'll just be seeing a few showers scattered about. Again, further south you get some heavy rain, a few inches of rain at least in places. So farmers down to the south, Boy, oh boy, your prayers have been answered with this. 77 right now, 70 burning stage, Lotus at 74. And the humidity is, it's pretty humid out there. And unfortunately, it's going to be staying really humid later on today. However, good news is, by the way, we do have a slight bit of a heat index right now. 81 Castroville, 79 at the airport. And uh, mold is on the high side. Now, as far as the rest of today, good news that we have some more clouds around here. That's going to hold temperatures mid 90s, thankfully, because of all that humidity. And we'll have a couple of showers developing here and there. Get the operative word for the day is south. Go south, much more rain, 94 high temperature, bit breezy at times, still a few showers. A couple of more showers left over tomorrow, more heavy rain to the south and west along the Rio Grande Valley. And after that, we'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Mike. This morning, monkeypox cases here in Bear County hitting 17. And while there's plenty of questions and misconceptions about the virus, all eyes are on the low number of available vaccines across the country. Some people are so desperate to get a vaccine, they're even taking a trip to Canada. Jonathan Cotto is standing by to tell us more about what's going on and what's being done about it. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Sarah, and good morning, Max. And that's right, many U.S. residents are flocking to Canada to find a chance or for a chance of finding a monkeypox vaccine. The CDC says confirmed monkeypox cases crossed the 10,000 mark on Friday, currently sitting at over 11,000. That's almost 30 percent of the global number of cases. A report from The New York Times says health experts believe the U.S. will need at least 3.5 million monkeypox vaccines to control the outbreak of the virus. But so far, the government has only secured 1.1 million vaccines and half of them won't be delivered until October. The other 5.5 million vaccines ordered by the feds are not scheduled to be delivered until next year. And since it's difficult to get vaccinated in the States, many U.S. residents are eyeing Montreal in Canada to get their shots. The Canadian city that's just north of the U.S.-Canada border started providing monkeypox vaccines in mid-May. 30% of those were received by foreigners. It has been hard. I was here yesterday and there was like four blocks long. So I just turned around and left this morning. So my ticket's like number 525. So um, it has been a challenge. Case said we've been following all things monkeypox, including a feature on the Trust Index. If you want to submit a question or see more Trust Index stories, just scan the QR code on your screen 
or go to ksat.com slash trust index. As for the doses, since there's not enough vaccine doses for everyone, the FDA has a strategy to stretch the supply. It's allowing for doses to be cut off to one fifth of what they were. That means they can get five doses out of one vial. If you're wondering whether that's enough protection, well, health experts say it is. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Jonathan. Topping your morning headlines, famous author Salman Rushdie recovering in the hospital after being viciously attacked during a public appearance. The man accused of attacking him appearing in court Saturday. ABC's Karina Mitchell has the details and the reaction from the community. A community in shock after author Salman Rushdie was viciously stabbed while giving a lecture in western New York. Detectives calling the attack an apparent assassination attempt. Adding the suspect, 24-year-old Hadi Mata of New Jersey, has shown, quote, strong indicators of ideological support for the Iranian regime. Authorities say among the images investigators found on his phone, a photo of Iranian Major General Qasem Soleimani who was killed in a U.S. drone strike. The suspect allegedly stabbing Rushdie multiple times Friday morning at the Chautauqua Institution. First responders airlifting him to an eerie Pennsylvania hospital where he underwent surgery and is now being treated. His agent says the author was taken off a ventilator and is now able to speak. Mata is charged with attempted second-degree murder and second-degree assault. His attorney pleading not guilty on his behalf. Residents in the community where the attack took place concerned. Unfortunately, it wasn't a surprising incident um, overall that, that it happened, but it's definitely surprising that, that it happened here. That act of violence wasn't an accident. It was purposeful, willful, and horrifying. More than 30 years ago, Iran's Ayatollah Khomeini called for Rushdie's death. His 1988 book, The Satanic Verses, is considered by some Muslims to be insulting to Islam. In Tehran, this man says he's glad because, quote, the insult Rushdie made against our prophet and the fatwa Khomeini issued against him finally worked. Investigators do not know whether the Ayatollah's prior call to assassinate Rushdie was a motivating factor in Friday's attack. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. In other headlines, two people died Saturday after a small plane tried an emergency landing on a city street in Illinois. Witnesses say the plane made a sputtering sound as it clipped several buildings and attempting to land on a street. A woman inside the plane was killed on impact while a man was pulled out from the wreckage by first responders and died a short time later. It's not clear which person was flying the plane. An autopsy for the victims is scheduled for Monday. The FBI says they've seen a big increase in threats since the search of government documents at former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. A law enforcement source says that they are investigating an unprecedented number of threats against the Bureau of Personnel and Bureau of Property. The names of two agents who signed that search warrant for Mar-a-Lago, well, their names are circulating online. While the documents released by the court redacted the names, a version has been leaked with the unofficial unsealing. Now, the FBI has declined to comment on any specific threats. Authorities in Mexico say they're hoping to rescue 10 miners this week, over a week after they became trapped underground. Rescue crews have been working around the clock to access the flooded coal mine in the northern part of the country that's 80 miles from the Texas border. But debris, obstacles, and water have slowed down their efforts. In eight days since the collapse, workers have pumped out nearly 150,000 cubic meters of water. That's enough to fill up around 60 Olympic pools. Time now, 6.08, 77 degrees out. We're still ahead on GMSA. It's been one year since the infamous Caldor fire torched large parts of Northern California. We'll look at who's being blamed for it. That's next. And after the break, the latest on the FBI's new report on the deadly movie set shooting in New Mexico involving Alec Baldwin. I know our Southern neighbors are getting a lot of rain, but what about us? Mike will let us know on how hot things will get when we come back. Welcome back. New details this morning in the deadly shooting on the film set in New Mexico. A new FBI report contradicts actor Alec Baldwin's account of what happened. After testing the guns on set, the FBI concluded the gun used in the accidental shooting, quote, could not be made to fire without the pull of the trigger, end quote. An FBI lab report shows four people 
were tested for fingerprints, but the only prints found on the ammunition box belong to the rust armorer, Hannah Reed. Back in December, Alec Baldwin described the moments the gun went off. She's guiding me through how she wants me to hold the gun for this angle. And I, I draw the gun out and I find a mark. So I take the gun and I start to cock the gun. I'm not going to pull the trigger. I, I said, do you see that? She goes, well, just cheat it down and tilt it down a little bit like that. And then I let go of the hammer of the gun and the gun goes off. Baldwin is adamant he never pulled the trigger despite the FBI's report. In a statement about their investigation, the agency says the manner of death is classified as an accident. This morning marks a year since last summer's infamous Caldor fire in Northern California. NPR reports it was the 15th largest recorded wildfire in California history, burned more than 221,000 acres between August 14th and October 21st. By the time it was finally contained, it had destroyed more than 1,000 structures, injured at least five people, and forced 50,000 more people to evacuate in the Lake Tahoe area. A father and son later arrested on suspicion of starting this place. Well, back here, time now, 613. Mike, it is 77 degrees. So some of the people to our south, they're getting some rain. Where's yep. our rain? Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be kind of few and far between. Again, it, you know, the scattered variety. We had a couple of showers around here yesterday, maybe a few more. And again, the further south you head, then rain chances are going to start to pick up. And folks way down in deep south Texas, down around the Rio Grande Valley, have already seen uh, some radar estimates measured with uh, you know, in the inches, four or five inches of rain already and more to come. 77 out there right now and up the road in Kerrville. It is at 70, the dew point 71. So yes, it is humid this morning. Not you know, not pushing back when you step outside. It is going to stay on the humid side, though, because those numbers are not going to be dropping all that much. So later on this afternoon, it's going to feel a whole lot like yesterday did as far as all that humidity. It was it was just tough to walk outside yesterday. Well, the full moon was on Friday and uh, Boy, what a beautiful, beautiful picture. The sturgeon moon, as it is referred to, and it is, of course, now technically a waning gibbous moon, but it is absolutely Gorgeous. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. I saw a little bit of it as uh, I was coming into work this morning. It is going to be obviously uh, setting over there in the next couple of hours. OK, here's what it looks like on radar right now. And uh, center of circulation appears to be right here, maybe just to the east of Kingsville. And already, I mean, look at all the rain there around Falfurious. Corpus Christi is obviously getting some rain and this is going to continue to work its way further inland as the uh, the day goes on. So rain around uh, Ranzas Pass, Rockport, Sinton, as well as heading in toward Mathis. And then you go a little bit further up to the north. Well, there's one little speck of rain right there. A couple of showers around Victoria. So we're going to be seeing some of these, you know, the bands, the northern bands of this kind of streaking on in here. And yeah, it's going to be very, very limited. But as far as the uh, the lion's share of rain, all of this is going to continue just to almost work its way just about straight to the uh, west throughout the day. Here's some of the rainfall estimates as of right now. And as you can see, the heaviest amounts down there to the south, about an inch around Corpus Christi, and then even further south, Rio Grande Valley, more than five inches of rain have already been uh, detected or at least estimated on radar. We will have some clouds around this morning. Temperatures will make it into the mid upper 80s. Going to keep a fair amount of clouds around, which is a good thing because with these the humidity that's going to be staying up there, 30% chance for a shower thunderstorm here in town kind of few and far between at best and obviously the majority of rain is going to be well down there to the south and here's what the computer model looks like again the center of that circulation stays down there to the south we just keep a couple of uh, straggling showers around here and that's going to be the situation going into tomorrow as well so at noon 89 degrees couple of showers more rain down to the south and same thing this afternoon, potentially very heavy down south. And, you know, it, it's always feast or famine around here. We may see way too much for some folks down there, but I know a lot of the farmers down to the south are just, you know, just thanking God right now for all this beautiful rain. 94 for a high temperature we will stay at least down in the 90s today and tomorrow, thanks to the cloud cover and um, a couple of showers. Then that's going to start to trim off a little bit and we're going to be pushing once again at triple digits by midweek and hopefully another little chance for some rain by the end of the week.
There's no triple digits on that forecast. No. By the way, we are in second place now. Oh, look at us. possession of second place. 58 days. Hit it yesterday. So uh, it'll be a real close call. You know, you get a little bit more sunshine and, and with the dry ground, it doesn't take anything just to, you know, have temperature skyrocket. You think about uh, yesterday, Friday, clouds moved in. We were at 97, dropped to 85. Soon, even late in the afternoon, clouds cleared out a little bit, shot way back up to 99 on Friday. We're back. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't take much to heat us up. All right, Thank Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Time now just about 618, 77 degrees. All now. right, still to come. We're just two weeks away from the KSAT Pigskin Classic. What you can expect from the action-packed weekend, that's in just a couple of moments. And college students starting to move back into campuses around the country, around the city as well. We're going to head to Southside location, check out how everything's going. So this morning, college students are heading back to class, but before classes can start, they need to move in. All right, so that's what students at Texas A&M University San Antonio, they are doing throughout the weekend. Also kicks off the JAG-X program, where first-year students, they're welcome to campus, get a chance to prepare for the new school year with their fellow Jaguars. Yesterday, students took part in the on-campus events, got to talk to faculty, talk to staff about what to expect. Be curious, to be adaptable to the new situations, and to be ready to study. Uh, going to college does take work and energy, and we know our students are excited and prepared for a bright future. University is set to start classes on Thursday for all of our back to school, return to class content. Head to KSAT.com, and I gotta say, just in the last five years, we've seen this campus grow exponentially. We were there I the think, first day they were able to move into the dorms. Right, so I think we both of us have done this story several mm -hmm. times, and it, it's crazy, and it makes me so happy to see how much they have grown right. and how, I don't know, it's it's The exciting. area around it's growing. I mean, they have sports. They it's, have two donkeys that roam on the campus as their mascots. I'll let you Did do that, that story. story. That, that you can do that. <laughs> Time now, 622, 77 degrees out. Well, after the break, we're just two weeks away from the KSAC Pigskin Classic. How you get involved, that's ahead of the action at the Dome. All right, it's what we've been talking about all morning. We're looking ahead. We are counting down the days to the inaugural KSAT Pigskin Classic. Yeah, so we'll be showcasing six local high school football teams over three games in one day at the Alamo Dome. It's all happening in two weeks on August 27th. It is a huge event. We're getting everyone involved. We're so excited about it. You can see the matchups right now on your screen over the next couple weeks. David Sears and RJ Marquez, they are going to be previewing these games during the week on GMSA at 9 a.m. Last Wednesday, they talked about Smithson Valley and Reagan. They're going to have another preview coming up this week. And you can watch the KSAT Pigskin Classic on TV, but you can also get your tickets now to watch the games in person at the Alamo Dome. Tickets are on sale at any Las Palapas location in San Antonio. They're $15 each, and they are good for one game or all three games. All right, you're also going to be able to buy tickets at the Alamo Dome beginning on the 22nd. If you have any questions about the event, where to get tickets, how, just head to KSAT.com. And this is not just us out there throwing the football around on the field. Mike Oser is going to be there too. Yep, we are going to be out there. Uh, me and Fiona down there running all the halftime stuff, all the bands and everything. Jen uh, Strusky is going to be out there as well. So, yeah, it's. I mean, to say it's two weeks away. This is weird. I can hear you, but I just see it, us. It is. Here, I'll, I'll <laughs> Thank just, you. I'll just Come on down. down. To say it's two weeks away is, I mean, you know, it's like, yes, high school football. I mean, kind of gives you the shivers, doesn't it? It does. And uh, anyone basically who works at KSAT will be there. Yeah. So come on down and and see, and like you said, 15 bucks, you can see all three of those games. It is going to be a blast down there. Very excited. All right, time now, 627, about 78 degrees out. And we could know the future of the Valdez School Police Chief Pete Arredondo in the next few days. What the school board is doing tomorrow, that's making headlines. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. It is 6.30 this morning. It is August 14th. It's still hot out there. So just a couple okay. of days ago, yeah, yeah. you saw some rain. You saw yes. the downpour. Yes. Yesterday, a little different story for you. It was, uh, and I had to, <laughs> uh, my husband has a new job, so we had to move his all of his books. I mean, he's got cases and cases of books into his new office, and it was, whew. It was we, a workout. Yeah, and we, you know, we messed up. We did it like at 2.30 in the Ooh, afternoon. Yesterday? That was yesterday. Ooh, it was, 
Yeah, that was tough to be outside it was yesterday, tough. and that's going to be the case uh, today. Although difference being yesterday, we did hit 102. Today, more clouds out there, and that's going to help to hold temperatures down. Right now, we're at 77 degrees. Got a few clouds. You still may be able to see the uh, well, two days past full moon uh, that's setting off to the west this morning. Humidity 82 percent. The dew points at 71, which this time of the morning is not bad. But the problem is that dew point is going to be staying up there very high. More clouds going to help to keep temperatures down to 90. 94 today, which is actually a slightly below normal, which is obviously some very good news. The aquifer yesterday, uh, you know, it's been taking a beating, although it did go up six tenths of a foot. Of course, check with your local area as far as uh, watering restrictions. Mold still very, very high, but it came down almost half of what it was on the previous day. All right, we did hit, like I said, 102 yesterday, so that puts us into the number two spot, 58 days that we have hit triple digits so far this year. And of course, we are just one away from hitting the record of 59, which was set back in 2009. So we're in sole possession of a second place as of right now. It's going to be a really close call, especially going into the middle part of next week. So here's what it looks like on radar right now and center of circulation right there just to the south of uh, Corpus Christi. And uh, boy, they are already getting a whole bunch of rain. This is going to be moving just about straight to the east. And as far as the, uh, the north side of, as you can see, there's still going to be some of these showers kind of sweeping through here. So we do have a chance for some rain, but again, the further south you go, that's where you're going to be seeing the lion's share of rain. They're already getting way a whole bunch of rain down to the south. We'll talk about our rain chances and when it looks like next to a close call of hitting 100 coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Mike. Well, this morning, the latest number of monkeypox cases here in Bear County is at 17. And while there's plenty of questions and misconceptions about the virus, all eyes are on the low number of available vaccines across our country. So some people are so desperate to get their hands on a vaccine, they're even going as far as Canada. Our Jonathan Cotto is standing by in the newsroom to tell us more about what's going on and what's being done about it. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max. And that's right. Many U.S. residents are flocking to Canada for a chance of finding a monkeypox vaccine. The CDC says uh, has says confirmed monkeypox cases crossed the 10,000 mark on Friday, currently sitting at over 11,000. That's almost 30 percent of the global number of cases. A report from The New York Times says health experts believe the U.S. will need 3.5 million monkeypox vaccines to control the outbreak of the virus. But so far, the government has only secured 1.1 million vaccines and half of them won't be delivered until October. The other 5.5 million vaccines ordered by the feds are not scheduled to be delivered until next year. And since it's difficult to get vaccinated in the United States, many U.S. residents are eyeing Montreal in Canada to get their shots. The Canadian city that's just north of the U.S.-Canada border started providing monkeypox vaccines in mid-May. 13% of those were received by foreigners. It has been hard. I was here yesterday and there was like four blocks long. So I just turned around and left this morning. So my ticket's like number 525. So um, it has been a challenge. He said we've been following all things monkeypox, including a feature on the Trust Index. If you want to submit a question or see more Trust Index stories, just scan the QR code on your screen or go to ksat.com slash trust index. As for those doses, Max and Sarah, since there's not enough vaccine doses for everyone, the FDA has a strategy to stretch the supply and it's allowing for doses to be cut to one fifth of what they were. That means we can get five doses out of one vial. And if you're wondering whether that's enough protection, well, health experts say it is. Back to you in the studio, Max. Sarah. Thank you, Jonathan. This morning, a heartbreaking birthday remembrance in Uvalde. Uzziah Garcia would have turned 11 years old this weekend. He was one of the 19 children killed at Robb Elementary on May 24th. Now, his family placed balloons, a cupcake with a candle, and a stuffed lion at his cross in the downtown plaza. Uzziah remembered for shaggy hair, passion for football, love of Nintendo, and, of course, his big heart. And meanwhile, questions surrounding Pete Arredondo's future as Uvalde's CISD police chief are still up in the air. This week, school board members will consult an attorney about his possible termination hearing. So this information comes from the board's agenda for the next meeting scheduled for Monday. Arredondo's faith was originally supposed to be decided back on July 22nd. 
However, two previous board meetings where Arredondo's employment were going to be discussed were both postponed, both at the request of his attorney. So the attorney consultation will happen in a closed session. Arredondo was placed on leave by the district nearly one month after the Uvalde school massacre. Nearly a year after 13 service members were killed in an explosion in Kabul, Afghanistan. Remember, they died during that explosion during the United States withdrawal from the country. Their lives honored at FD, FD, F, or VFW Post 8397 here in San Antonio. The names of 11 Marines, one soldier, and a Navy Corpsman killed last August. They were remembered in a special flag retirement ceremony just yesterday. David Espinoza, only 20 years old when he was killed. He was a Lance Corporal in the Marine Corps from Texas. Elizabeth, who is Espinoza's mother, she was given one of the 13 stripes of the retired American flag with her son's name on it and laid to rest. It's beautiful. Um, I appreciate it. Um, like my husband said, it's um, to remember them and not forget them for their sacrifice. She was also given a gold star flag to remember her son's sacrifice. All 13 service members killed in Kabul. They were honored with congressional gold medals. A Southside Boutique, along with the community members, are helping a family rebuild their lives. A family of seven is now homeless after their home caught fire on Thursday. Since then, the Sacedo family has been trying to manage their living situation. They didn't ask for help, but people began donating money and school supplies. Mariana Espinoso Minos owns the Southside Boutique Marianitas and says Sacedo is a loyal customer. So she wanted to return the support. She's collecting clothes and monetary donations at her store. Erica, Erica Sacedo says she's grateful to have the support of the community. It hurts me, you know, seeing that the kids go back to school Monday and, you know, they, they have nothing. They have, they were left with any, nothing, and, you know, it's hard. There are other good people out there, so it's very overwhelming to see the community come together and help us out. Next Saturday, two plate sales are going to be happening to support the family. Marianitas will have a turkey leg sale, and you can find those details on her Facebook page. Another plate sale will benefit the Sacedos at Rubens Tamale parking lot starting at noon. That's also happening next Saturday. San Antonio Water System reminding customers that the city is still in stage two water restrictions. The reminder also includes the rules for stage two restrictions. Now, customers who don't follow the rules, they can actually receive citations. Those citations cost about $150. Watering days are the same in stage two with stage one, but the hours are reduced. If you have any questions about the stages, about the penalties, and about sauce, just head to ksat.com. We have everything you need to know. Two local organizations are joining forces to keep the San Antonio River clean. Dozens of volunteers were out picking out trash this weekend. The group says whenever it rains, trash usually ends up in the river, especially near the source of the water. So volunteers were out with gloves and trash bags picking up all they could. They say this is a problem everyone should care about, and we all play, we all play a part of the solution. A lot of small behaviors from a you know, thousands, millions of people, co you know, contribute to this massive problem. And we need some city support and city solutions for the control of trash at the source points, not at the end points. So both groups picked up more than 650 pounds of trash. They say they're always looking for more volunteers. The digital divide is something we talk about a lot. It's a gap between those who have access to digital technology and those who don't. It's been a problem in and around San Antonio. It was made even more apparent during this pandemic. So there are programs, there are organizations working to address the problem and working to help the future of our community. One of those organizations is SA Digital Connects. Later this morning on Leading SA, the executive director joins us. We're gonna be talking about the problem, talking about the efforts to solve it and the ultimate goal. So if you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com. Join us for a full conversation at 8 a.m. Time now just about 641, 76 degrees out. Well, still ahead, two siblings in need of some home repair in Houston get a big lift. Thanks to volunteers, we'll hear from them on this remarkable story that's coming up. And after the break, some schools have returned to class, but not all of them. That means you have more time to shop for school supplies, how you can find some deals to help the budget.
Taking a look outside, 76 degrees at 6. Oh, it's beautiful out there. Beautiful clear skies out there. Different story to south of us, especially in the Corpus Christi area. Will that rain reach us? Maybe. We don't know. Mike knows. He'll let us know in just a bit. Good morning and welcome back. So we are about one week into our month-long return to class special. Some schools back on campus, others still have time for some last-minute shopping. As the country faces high inflation and school supply shortages, ABC's Rena Roy has some ways you can save this year. Backpacks, notebooks, pencils, the back-to-school shopping list can really add up at the cash register. But with inflation prices and many stores still facing production issues, Consumer Reports Deals editor Samantha Gordon says there are still back-to-school deals to be had. We are still seeing some of those residual disruptions that are impacting shipping times and inventory levels, but you can still find savings. Gordon says you should plan ahead, create a budget, and compare prices online before you shop. Just knowing what your options are allows you to make much smarter purchasing decisions. Spread out your shopping by checking stores that aren't major retailers. When it comes to a budget, choosing the right stores based on how much you'll be able to save can really make a big difference. And don't discredit places like office supply stores and wholesalers. If you're in the market for electronics, consider buying refurbished products. Look for a certified used model from a reputable seller. That can be a great way to get a good chunk of savings and the product should function just as well as something that's brand new out of the box. And after you've made all your back to school purchases, keep an eye out for sales. If you see a price drop, you may be able to get a partial refund. You just have to reach out to customer service and ask them. You usually have a two week window if they have a policy in place. And if they don't, they might be able to work with you or you might just be able to return that product and buy it again for that sale price. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Time now, 6.46. Hey, Mike. Hey. Hey, Mike. Just checking to make sure I had all my buttons pushed right over there. So we do know, um, I know East Central is, I'll be live with them. They're starting school on Monday, and then SAISD starts on Tuesday. And I believe Alamo Heights also starts this week as well. So a lot of people yep. heading back this week. Yeah, we've had, what, a half dozen, maybe eight districts or so started yeah. last week uh, over the course of the week. And then, yeah, more really throughout the, the entire month. And some actually don't go back until right around Labor Day or even after that. Speaking of which, if you are heading back to school or if you are heading to starting your second week of school. Uh, tomorrow morning, upper 70s, mid to upper 70s, like we've been experiencing. There may be a couple of showers around the area. Again, further down to the south, uh, some of our communities going down uh, 35 in Atascosa County, around, uh, say, uh, Frio County, uh, Wilson County down there. You may see a couple of more showers and further down to the south. That's the operative, um, I guess, term or location as far as this forecast is. More rain down to the south. After school, we're going to be still very humid mid 90s that's going to be nice but there will be a couple of uh, showers maybe even a thunderstorm around the area in the afternoon just very few and far between love this picture look at how beautiful that is and without reading the caption can you tell where it is anyone anyone in class it's a, it's it, at yeah. a lake somewhere <laughs> is it a lake or is that Wood, a it's woodlawn lake oh that is woodlawn uh, lake yes mr mcclellan is one of our regulars and there you can see the uh that little Lighthouse oh, I see right it there. now. And I always take such beautiful pictures there. And, you know, different directions. You look in Woodlawn Lake, a million different pictures. And he's, uh, I think, taking just about all of them. But great shot there. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAT Connect shot. And, uh, yeah, down to the south. And, like I said, the operative word in this forecast is south. Because look at even around uh, Kingsville, Fal Furious, you have already seen, I mean, just a ton of rain. And it's continuing there. And the center of circulation would be... Uh, right about uh, heading in toward Kingsville, right about there. And this is all going to be working its way off to the east, uh, excuse me, off to the west as time rolls on. It's not going to be moving even in our direction at all. The one benefit, though, we are going to be seeing from all this is the fact that we are on the kind of the, the northern side. So some of these uh, bands of rain are going to continue to swing around here, and that will at least give us the chance for a few showers here. Hill Country, I think you're just pretty much going to be, unfortunately, high and dry from this, but we got to be happy for the folks down to the south getting just a ton of rain. Hopefully it puts a dent in uh, the lack of rain you've had down there. We're going to stay in the upper 70s. A couple of clouds hanging around here this morning and then make it up through the 80s late morning. A few more clouds around here. That's going to be the nice thing uh, as far as today. At least we don't, I mean, if we don't have rain, at least we're going to have a few more clouds around here. 
94 for high temperature and very humid. So yesterday it was just almost ridiculous to walk outside. We did get up to 102, but today we will stay a little bit lower than that. All be very, very humid. Here's the forecast, and as you can see, that low moves just about straight to the west, but a few of these showers are going to be kind of uh, swinging on through here. More clouds hanging around throughout the rest of the afternoon and then going into this evening. And then tomorrow morning, a couple of uh, showers around the area. And so that's why I've got that uh, mention of a few showers as you head off to work and school tomorrow morning and then just the slight chance even though this computer model takes this on out of here I think we might have a slight chance for a couple of showers even a thunderstorm hanging around in the afternoon but again not great chance of rain here in town southwest tomorrow yes 89 at noon a couple of showers around here and then 94 showers heavy rain down to the south and like I said not earlier not a good uh, day to go down to the coast today and then over the next seven days again that chance for a couple of showers tomorrow afternoon maybe one or two on Tuesday. We are going to be getting back up flirting right around 100 degrees by midweek and again that's very cloud dependent. A couple of more clouds you don't, but it doesn't take much. A little bit of sunshine and with the ground so dry, it just heats up so quickly. So that's kind of the, the benchmark is, you know, are we going to hit 100 or stay just below that? And then hopefully a couple of more showers by the end of next week. I have to ask, is the suit keeping you cool, though? <laughs> <laughs> I'm inside. Yeah. What did you call it? What kind of style, Max? Oh, uh, Yacht Club Chic. Yacht Club Chic, I yes. Thank you very that. much. All I need oh, now only, is the, only Mike can pull that off. All I need now is the yacht in the club, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Time now, 651, about 78 degrees out. Okay, still ahead, a special group of kids got to have some fun in the sun at Schlitterbahn. Don't miss the uplifting story. That's before 7 a.m. Good morning and welcome back. This weekend, two brothers here in Texas who lost their parents, lost their grandparents. They have a roof over their heads thanks to volunteers. The last few years have been tough for 22-year-old Jalen and his younger brother, Julian. When their parents and grandfather passed away, Jalen promised his mother he would take care of Julian. Their home was also severely damaged during Hurricane Harvey and the freeze last year. That's when Katie Responds, a disaster rebuild organization, and countless volunteers stepped in to help. At one point, I was just done with the house. I was ready to sell it at one point and just didn't want to, just too much weight on my shoulders, couldn't do it. It makes me so happy to, oh, to see that there's good people, you know, now that, like, I just like the way that we've been treated. I just didn't think anything good would happen. Oh, so heartwarming. Volunteers remodeled the entire home in three months and the Lakewood Church in Houston furnished the home. That is amazing. Oh. All right. You know what today is? What's today, Max? Well, it's a holiday. It is National Creamsicle Day. Ooh. Are you a creamsicle person? I haven't had a creamsicle. It looks really good. Though. All right. So with the record heat here in San Antonio and all the heat around the country, perfect time to celebrate. So it actually happens when you mix orange sherbet and vanilla ice cream with a popsicle stick. Also featured in other desserts and, you know, different beverages. Here's a fun fact. Creamsicle. It's almost 100 years old. Orange sherbet is, mm -hmm. I think, one of my favorite flavors. It's like under the radar, like the Flintstone push up pops. You, you were the Choco Taco. I was a Choco Taco nice. guy. Time now, 6.56, 78 degrees out. We'll be right back after this. Well, welcome back. Before we go, I want to share a fun story from the weekend. Some local kids had a special day at Schlitterbahn in New Braunfels. It was special because they're each battling life-threatening conditions. Organizers invited nearly 700 kids to enjoy the water park. They say it's a great way for the kids and their families to relieve some stress and have fun in the sun like everyone else. Yeah, you need some water to, to cool off and you're getting plenty of it down there. That low moving on shore and further south you go, you get some heavy rain. I've already seen a few inches of rain and that's going to continue to work its way across to the west. So we'll just be sort of on the uh, straggling, you know, get a couple of little scraps here and there in San Antonio. Uh, about a 30% chance for some rain here in town. 94, so clouds are going to help to keep temperatures down. Thank goodness because it is going to be humid today and then uh, maybe a couple more showers tomorrow. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for watching. We're going to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. See you guys at 8 a.m. Live from Chase at 12.
Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. An out-of-state company making a big donation to the city of Uvalde, honoring the lives lost in the deadly Robb Elementary School shooting. Jonathan Cotto joins us live with the latest. The Southside community comes together to lift up and support a family that lost their home, that family's reacting to the kindness of strangers. That story straight ahead. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, the sun is up, temps are down. How hot will it get today? Will we see rain? We're going to check in with Mike Osage in just a few moments. But until then, good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday. It is August 14th. Thank you so much for joining us and waking up with us this Sunday morning. Have you been outside, Max? Yes, yeah, so. I, oh, I couldn't find Max <laughs> earlier, and then uh, then he walks in. You've been walking around outside. What were you doing? Been walking out outside. So we have a roof at KSEP. And so sometimes if you get to the roof at the right time, you can get a beautiful sunrise. Hold on, pause. Max is in a boot. Did you I'm climb, in a walking boot. Did you, did you climb the stairs? So there's an elevator, but then you do have to take the last <laughs> staircase up. And usually it's worth it, except today, Mikey, it was a beautiful sunrise. Does your but, doctor know you're climbing the stairs in the boot? But the sunrise <laughs> was, me. was hidden by the school. Ah. Yeah. yeah. But either way, it was beautiful this morning. Yeah, and it depends on where you are because looking uh, straight up to the north, we've got plenty of clear skies. Now, this is pointed just about east southeast. And if I uh, pointed obviously right at the sun, it'd be way too flared out on that camera. But uh, we do have a lot more clouds, obviously, down there to the south. And we've got uh, some rain. First of all, temperatures right now are in the uh, 70s. And I'm going to do something here real quickly because I want to show you what radar looks like and because there is plenty of like I said clouds down to the south and there is plenty of rain around the area as of right now. Let me find the right little uh, graphic here and we will be on our way. So I'm going to start over here and show you the uh, cloud cover once again very quickly. And then, like I said, down to the south, we've got plenty of rain. That low that we've been watching in the Gulf of Mexico has finally moved basically on shore and this thing is dumping a ton of rain and then some uh, down here, uh, Kingsville area and Falfuria. Some of the radar estimates and some of these heavier red spots right in here. Uh, three, four, five inches of rain radar estimates, not to actual ground measurements. And then further up to the north, right around Corpus Christi, Rockport, Mathis, some of these showers and then Victoria. You're starting to see a little bit of this rain as well. So as this continues to work its way pretty much straight to the west, and then head over toward the Rio Grande Valley or the Rio Grande by uh, tomorrow, we will be kind of on the, the top edge of this. So some of these bands as this spins counterclockwise will kind of sweep on through here. And so that will give us a chance for some rain. Not a great chance further south. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously down there a sure thing and in some cases hate to say it almost too much, although the ground is so dry, it's just going to be sucking it up like a dry sponge. But 78 degrees here in town, hello to 75, 74, Balverde, Bernie stage at 72. Mold is on the high side. It came down a whole bunch, though, from the previous day's reading. Still waiting for today's count to come out. So warm, humid. Taking into account a shower, especially to the east and southeast of this morning, and then later on this afternoon, a few showers and thunderstorms. Obviously, the very heavy rain down to the south and mid 90s. So we are going to keep those clouds that we're looking at down to the south. Those will kind of come in here. That's going to help to keep temperatures down, which is a good thing because humidity is definitely going to be sticking around this afternoon like we had yesterday. Tomorrow, a few more showers and thunderstorms. Again, the heaviest will be to the southwest. Once again, mid 90s, still fairly humid, then more sunshine, still humid the rest of the week, upper 90s, close to 100 and perhaps a couple of showers later on in the week. We'll get everything all sorted out in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Mike. Top story this morning, San Antonio police still investigating an afternoon shooting on the city's north side. It ended with a man in the hospital. That victim. He was shot while installing carpet. So this all happened around 1230 yesterday afternoon. This is on Hebrew Road near Churchill Estates Boulevard and Bitters. San Antonio police on the scene telling us four or five people were installing a carpet in that building. That's when gunfire erupted. One person had to be taken to the hospital, still waiting to learn his condition. And this actually happened right next to a children's party venue. Luckily, no other injuries released. Now people and police still trying to figure out what exactly led up to the shooting and trying to figure out if the shooter will face any charges. 
A heartbreaking birthday remembrance in Uvalde. Uzziah Garcia would have turned 11 years old this weekend. He was one of 19 children and two teachers killed at Robb Elementary. Now his family placed balloons, a cupcake with a candle, and a stuffed lion on his cross in the downtown plaza in Uvalde. Uzziah is remembered for his shaggy hair, his passion for football, his love of Nintendo, and of course, his big heart. Staying in Uvalde, a wholesale nursery based out of Arizona, paying their respects to the 21 victims who were shot and killed, and they're doing so by making a very symbolic donation. Our Jonathan Cotto joining us live from the newsroom with more on how this company is hoping the people of Uvalde and the families, especially those directly affected, will benefit from the long lasting and beautiful detail. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Sarah, and good morning, Max. And yeah, a beautiful and, sim and symbolic indeed. This is a company that serves the Southwest region of the United States that includes California, New Mexico, and Texas. They've donated 21 live oak trees. Now, Arizona wholesale growers say they've worked with a nursery in Uvalde before and reached out to learn of ways they can support the community in some shape or form after learning of the horrific events. We spoke with the growers who say they've brought in and 21 live oak trees down to Uvalde all the way from Arizona. The 21 oak trees will be planted at the cemetery in honor and in memory of each victim. One thing I hope that they they feel is that everybody doesn't matter if they're in Arizona or somewhere else in the country or the world that are they're thinking of people here in Uvalde and that they just kind of keep that in mind that everybody's with them also. Now, the trees are about eight feet tall and come in a 24 inch wide container. They are a long lasting. There are they are long lasting trees and are currently about five years old and can live beyond 100 years if well taken care of. Now, Cox says the trees represent strength and longevity. Cox also says he understands a donation from a nursery isn't exactly what one would expect, meaning it's not some form of disaster relief, but he adds gardening and trees mean so much to so many people and hope it can provide some form of healing. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, the question surrounding Pete Arredondo's position as Uvalde CISD police chief is still up in the air. So tomorrow, school board members will consult an attorney about his termination hearing. That's according to the board's agenda for tomorrow's regular school board meeting. The attorney consultation will happen in a closed session. Arredondo was placed on leave by the district nearly one month after the Uvalde school massacre. And we have a follow up this morning, a family devastated by fires, receiving support from the community, feelings of hopelessness and uncertainty, slowly being replaced by hope and optimism. That's because donations are pouring in, trying to help replace belongings that was destroyed in a fire. The local family telling Camelia Juarez that they're overwhelmed with all the gratitude. Erica Saucedo was running errands like it was any other day. Then she got a call, her home was on fire and everything their family had built was gone. From the outside of the home, you would not think it looks the way it does on the inside. San Antonio fire crews say lightning struck the house. Since then, the Saucedo family has been trying to manage their living situation. They didn't ask for help, but people began donating money and school supplies. Maybe because our culture, we carry ourselves you know, with the high pride and, you know, you don't ask for help. And then the next thing I knew, somebody had posted on Facebook that they're not going to ask for help, so we are. And word started spreading and word started spreading. Mariana Espinosa Munoz owns a Southside boutique, Marionetta's, and says Saucedo is a loyal customer and wanted to return the support. She's collecting clothes and monetary donations at her store on Nogalitos. It hurts me, you know, seeing that the kids go back to school Monday and... You know, they, they have nothing. They have, they were left with any, nothing, and you know, it's hard. It didn't take long for donations to come in. One customer brought bags of clothes that were the perfect size. The family of seven is working with insurance to get back on their feet. In the meantime, they're thankful to have the support of the community. There are other good people out there, so it's very overwhelming to see the community come together and help us out. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. The digital divide is a gap between those who have access to digital technology and those who do not. It's been a problem in and around San Antonio, and it was made even more apparent during this pandemic. That's right. So joining us in today's leading SA segment is Marina Gavito. She is the executive director with SA Digital Connects. Thank you so much for making time for us this morning, Marina. Yes, thanks for having me. So right off the bat, for those who don't know, how problematic is the digital divide here in our community? Yeah, so... 
today, 20% of residents in San Antonio and Bear County face barriers accessing the internet. And that could be for a couple of, of reasons. First off, maybe they don't have access to infrastructure. You know, if they're kind of in the unincorporated areas of Bear County, even if they wanted to connect to fiber infrastructure, they can't. A second really big problem is affordability. So maybe they do have AT&T, Spectrum, or Google Fiber outside their home, but they can't afford it. That's a huge barrier uh, for why people don't have internet. And lastly is uh, digital literacy. So you know maybe they can connect, maybe they can afford it, but they don't know you know, how to start a computer. They don't know how to set up an email address or access city resources. And so, you know, SA Digital Connects is focusing on all those three legs of the stool and making sure uh, that people get connected to the internet. So you kind of just touched on it, but can you go deeper into how SA Digital Connects works and helps, you know, that digital divide? Yeah, absolutely. So SA Digital Connects is focused on three things. Uh, with we we joined we created a public sector private sector and a community collaboration and all together we built our community's digital equity plan what that digital equity plan sh tells us is where the digital divide is in san antonio it kind of quantified it for us how it impacts different demographics how it impacts older adults how it impacts veterans how it impacts students and so now that we had created that plan sa digital connects is focused on implementing the plan and you all may have heard about the infrastructure bill and uh, there's going to be a lot of federal funding going to the states and you know then we'll draw it down to the cities and counties that is focused on broadband expansion and so we're really making sure that san antonio and bear county get our fair share of that funding um and then lastly uh the third thing that sa digital connects is focused on is tracking and reporting progress along the way and making sure all residents are connected so how exactly do you guys go about making sure that everyone is connected? You know, using those funds, not only local funds, but also federal funds. I mean, are you out there? Because I remember during the pandemic, we had buses out there with Wi-Fi for students and families. You know, we've seen how vital Wi-Fi is to our day to day lifestyle, especially for students. How do you guys do this outreach? Yeah, that, that's a great question. So uh, this past week, we celebrated a huge milestone where we saw county leadership step up and dedicate $25 million towards digital inclusion efforts. Um, I want to be clear that none of that funding is going to come to or through SA Digital Connects. Those are all those funds are all going to be going to, towards efforts uh, to closing the digital divide. Uh, SA Digital Connects is funded by the private sector, our, our private sector partners, uh, fund us to help us do this work every day. And so one of the other uh, things that we're tracking is the affordable connectivity program. Right now, the FCC has, uh, the it's called Affordable Connectivity Program, ACP, and it's basically a $30 subsidy off of people's internet bill every single month. And most of the bigger internet service providers like AT&T, Spectrum, Google Fiber, offer a $30 a month plan. So essentially, when people sign up for this benefit, they could be getting internet for free every single month. And so we get reports on how many people in San Antonio and Bear County have signed up for it. We're working very closely with the internet service providers to provide fiber infrastructure on those households that don't. And so, you know, we're just one step at a time and making sure everyone's connected. And Marina, short term, what comes next? And long term, what benefits will our community see as a whole? Yeah, great question. So short term, you know, like we were uh, talking about, you know, people need the Internet, right, to apply for job opportunities. Students need it for school. Older adults need it for to feel connected to their family and friends. People need it for rental and utility assistance or to find housing. People need it to apply for jobs online. So these are all the basic ways that we can use Internet. So there are so many, so many short term wins for residents in our city and county long term i mean this is a huge economic development generator right businesses are going to want to come here when they know we have a fully connected city in a county and county um you know obviously we're going to have a bigger workforce uh he here in our city and county as well so there are a lot of great short-term wins but also long term it benefits all of us all right well thank you so much for joining us today anyone who has any questions about the program how to get involved we're gonna have loads of answers throughout the morning just head to ksat.com thank you so much thank you marina thank you 
Still to come on GMSA, a group of volunteers taking an active approach to protect a precious resource. Why they say you should do the same. And Mike is going to have your full forecast in just a few moments. How hot will it be? Will we see rain? We'll be right back. Good morning, everyone. Well, yeah, there's a lot of rain out there, just not maybe in your backyard. Unfortunately, for the vast majority of us, there will be a couple of showers around today and then a few of them. There's going to be that chance for a couple of showers hanging around tomorrow morning as you head off to work and school. I know some folks second week of school and a lot of other kids. It is the first day back to school. So yeah, you might want to allow yourself a little extra time just because of those few showers. Then one or two showers or a storm in the afternoon. The majority of that, though, is going to be well down to the uh, southwest and well, I was going to show a little pretty picture here, but our well, my little connection didn't work out too well. Anyway, here's what it looks like on radar as of right now, and we have got a bunch of rain down there to the south and there's been a bunch and there's going to be a whole heck of a lot more and I hate to say it, you know, after not having rain forever, it seems like it's flooding is definitely going to be an issue in some of our extreme southern counties. So this is what it looks like as of right now, as you can see right here, right around uh, Corpus Christi and then Kingsville fell furious. All of this very heavy rain. The center of circulation would be right there just about at uh, Corpus Christi and it's pretty much moving straight to the west. And so again, we are going to be seeing just some of these northern little uh, fringes of this as this moves to the west sweeping through the area. So that's why we'll see a couple of those showers then later on uh, this afternoon. Just one or two of them. At least we're going to keep a lot of clouds around. That's going to help out with temperatures. Here's some of the radar estimates right now. And look at that seven inches of rain in that one bullseye right there. And then up around Corpus Christi, uh, say about an inch and then a little bit to almost two inches rain just to the southwest of there. So again, down to the south, going to be the heavy rain, potential flooding rain, obviously, and then that will continue to work its way off to the west. So kind of batting down the hatches around uh, Laredo, maybe even Catula, Eagle Pass as we go into tomorrow. That's definitely going to be a, a threat for some heavy downpours. 84 at 10 o'clock, 87 at 11, and then we'll make it through the rest of the afternoon with a lot of clouds. That helps to keep temperatures into the mid 90s and that 30% chance for a couple of showers and thunderstorms around here. And thank goodness we're going to have a whole lot of clouds because there's a whole lot of humidity yesterday. Humidity was just, I mean, uh, it was almost tough to get outside, and that's going to be the situation again today, except we will have a lot of clouds around here and these few showers. Again, this system pretty much moves straight to the west. We get a little bit of the uh, kind of the northern fringes of it, if you will, and some of these showers will be moving on through. North of San Antonio, north of 90 and 10, pretty much skip any sort of rain. I mean, if something were to pop up, great, but it's going to be pretty much limited south of 10. Tomorrow morning, we have a few of those showers around here as well, and that low will continue to work its way off into northern Mexico. But again, it's going to be very heavy rain. That's even in the morning hours and then further on west of there or further on through the afternoon. It's going to add to that, obviously. So 89 degrees today at noon. Couple of showers, you know, especially way down to the south, a lot more than just a couple of uh, showers, but a few stragglers may start to work their way further up to the north and then 30% chance for a shower and a thunderstorm or two heaviest down to the south 94, a uh, very humid 94 and heat index is going to be pushing well at 100. So it's just going to be that thick humidity out there tomorrow. A couple of showers left over in the morning and then one or two of them in the afternoon hours and then we're going to start to heat up and like I've been saying for the past few weeks, that's very the temperature midweek is very dependent upon cloud cover, especially here in town. We're not going to be getting a whole lot of widespread heavy rain from this event, so the grounds will remain very dry and that heats up very quickly. Again, the example being Friday got up into the upper 90s, had clouds move in, dropped to mid 80s. As soon as those clouds cleared out in the course of two hours, got back up to 98. We're back. So it can heat up real easily. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Time now, 822, 78 degrees out. Two local groups focused on conserving the San Antonio River joined forces to keep it pollution free. How you can help. Good morning and welcome back. Two local organizations working together and enlisting dozens of volunteers trying to clean up the San Antonio River. So volunteers with the River Aid San Antonio and Headwaters Sanctuary, they were out with gloves, trash bags, picking up as much trash as they could throughout the weekend. Group members say whenever it rains, trash usually ends up in the river. They say this is a huge problem that everyone should be concerned about, and they're always looking for volunteers. 
Time now, 826, 78 degrees out. Well, still to come on GMSA, a local VFW post takes time to honor the 13 service members killed in Afghanistan one year ago. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, August 14th. Thank you so much for waking up with us. All right, so last couple days, it's been a whirlwind of weather for you in particular. It's funny because we had like three different perspectives. You saw downpours. Yes. I had like six raindrops, which was also very Heavy exciting. Heavy fat drops. <laughs> the slow, heavy fat drops. Sarah Spivey said she didn't get she any She was weather. very upset. We talked about yesterday? Or did yeah, on, no, two on days ago. On Thursday. What did you get when we had that big rain come in? You uh, had the big I rain. I had massive amounts. <laughs> I didn't really see that much. The previous day I got some, yeah. And then yesterday it was just nothing. I mean, a couple of folks got some showers yesterday, but uh, it was just, I mean, even walking outside of the car was miserable. 102 yesterday, and that was day number 58, by the way, of the triple digit temperatures. 78 right now, and as you can see, that we do have some more clouds that have moved on in here, and uh, we've got a high temperature today of 94, so those clouds are going to help out. They'll help the black sun keep us in the mid-90s, which is a good thing because the humidity is going to be just sky high once again today. The aquifer went up four tenths of a foot in the latest reading, and the allergens mold did go up from yesterday. Yesterday was about half of the previous day, so still lower than a couple of days ago, but still on the high side at 8120. All right, as far as rain, and as you can see, there is plenty of it down there to the south of us, and it's going to be staying pretty much down there to the south. If you live, um, well, even in and around the metropolitan area, rain is definitely going to be um, at a premium. And as you can see, a couple of these showers right there, say around Victoria, Beeville, and some of these will continue to just kind of, as this moves straight to the west, some of these are going to kind of continue to sweep into the area. But the center of this is well down here, centered, oh, call it right around Kingsville right now, or just uh, east of there, and it's going to move almost straight to the west. And there have already been some radar estimates of, oh gosh, say five, six, seven inches of rain in some spots down here, well down to the south. And this is where some of the flooding rain is going to be. And then that will move over in toward the Rio Grande by tomorrow. And that's where also flooding potential is going to be. So warm, humid, couple of showers, you know, down to the east, uh, or down to the southeast and down to the south this morning. Obviously heavier rain further south and a couple of stray showers and thunderstorms. About a 30% chance here in town. Mid 90s for a high temperature. Southwest will be the area for the heavier rain tomorrow. A couple of uh, stray showers, maybe a thunderstorm. Once again, mid 90s and then upper 90s and it's going to be humid this week. Now the humidity may keep us from hitting actually 100, but Boy, you're going to feel every bit of that upper 90s this week and a couple of showers going to be possible later on in the week. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Mike. Well, a wholesale, wholesale nursery based out of Arizona is paying their respects to the 21 victims whose lives were tragically cut short by making a very symbolic donation. Jonathan Cota joining us live from the newsroom. More on how this company is now helping the people of Uvalde and helping those families who have been directly affected. And they're helping them with a beautiful and long lasting tribute. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Max. Good morning, Sarah. And yeah, beautiful and symbolic indeed. This is a company that serves the southwest region of the United States. That includes California, New Mexico, and Texas, and they've donated 21 live oak trees. Now, Arizona wholesale growers say they've worked with a nursery in Uvalde before and reached out to learn of ways they can support the community in some shape or form after learning of the horrific events. We spoke with the growers who say they have brought in 21 live oak trees down to Uvalde all the way from Arizona. The 21 oak trees will be planted at the cemetery in honor and in memory of each victim. Gardening and being out in nature and taking care of nature. Um, it does heal, it does make people feel good. Um, and I hope that people see these and they feel a connection to them and they feel um, interested in, in maintaining the area and the space and kind of the the symbology of it and yeah keeping keeping that in people's minds the trees are about eight feet tall and come in a 24 inch wide container they are a long lasting they are long lasting trees and are currently about five years old and can live beyond a hundred years if well taken care of Cox says the trees represent strength and longevity. 
Cox also tells us he understands a donation from a nursery isn't exactly what one would expect, meaning it's not some form of disaster relief, but he adds gardening and trees mean so much to so many people and hope it can provide some form of healing. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, the relentless heat has grabbed hold of South Texas and is refusing to let go despite some of the showers that we've had here and there. Well, with that in mind, the San Antonio water system is reminding its customers that San Antonio remains in stage two water restrictions. That reminder also included the rules for stage two restrictions. Customers who don't follow the rules can receive citations that will cost you around $150. So watering days are the same in stage two as stage one, but the hours are reduced. So just head to ksat.com to learn more about the rules and what those restrictions entail. College students around the country and around the city are returning to class, but first a lot of them have to move in. That's right, moving on campus. So take a look. This was the scene out at Texas San Antonio, Texas A&M San Antonio yesterday. Moving day, kick off the university's JAG X program. This is where first year students are welcome to the campus. They get a chance to prepare for the new school year. They meet their fellow Jaguars. They participate in a lot of campus events surrounding moving day. And they even got a chance to meet with faculty and staff. Talk about expectations. Be curious, to be adaptable to the new situations, and to be ready to study. Uh, going to college does take work and energy, and we know our students are excited and prepared for a bright future. University is scheduled to start their classes on Thursday. For all of our back-to-school return-to-class content, head to ksat.com. In your morning headlines, an estimated 935,000 people in the greater Detroit area are being asked to boil their drinking water. The Great Lakes Water Authority issued the alert Saturday after a leak in a key water source was discovered. The potentially contaminated water main was isolated about a mile west of Lake Huron Water Treatment Facility. Most of the areas affected are Detroit suburbs, but the water advisory also covers several outlying cities and townships, including Pontiac, Auburn Hills and Troy. Well, as the FBI reports an unprecedented number of threats against their FBI agents, all of the wake of the search of Mar-a-Lago, there were armed protests outside of the FBI field office in Phoenix. Arizona is an open carry state, so the demonstrators technically not breaking any laws by holding their weapons outside of the FBI facility. A spokesperson for the Phoenix FBI office said it was a group of about 25 protesters. They were peaceful and they never stepped on the property. Almost two weeks after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan, a delegation of U.S. lawmakers is doing the same. According to the Associated Press, the five-member delegation is in Taiwan today and tomorrow as part of a visit to Asia. The group, led by Democratic Senator Ed Markey of Massachusetts, will meet senior leaders to discuss U.S.-Taiwan relations, regional security, trade, investment, and other issues. China disapproved of Pelosi's visit to Taiwan and responded by sending missiles, warships, and warplanes into the seas and air around Taiwan. Well, nearly a year after 13 service members were killed in an explosion in Kabul, Afghanistan, their lives honored at the VFW Post 8397. The names of the 11 Marines, a soldier and Navy corpsman killed last August they were remembered in a special flag retirement ceremony this weekend. David Espinoza was only 20 years old when he was killed. He was a Lance Corporal in the Marine Corps from Texas. Elizabeth, Espinoza's mom, she was given one of the 13 stripes, the retired American flag with her son's name on it to lay to rest. It's beautiful. Um, I appreciate it. Um, like my husband said, it's um, to remember them and not forget them for their sacrifice. She was also given a gold star flag to remember her son's sacrifice. All 13 service members killed in Kabul, they were honored with congressional gold medals. And from one memorial honoring our fallen veterans to another. One of Washington, D.C.'s most solemn monuments, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, has a new life on the web. Volunteers have created a virtual wall of faces, pictures of every service member who died in the conflict a picture for every name etched on the wall. Jay Korf has the story. So there's 58,281 men and women who are honored by the wall. The overwhelming number of names that tumble by as you walk past the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington serve as a solemn reminder to the sacrifice so many made in service to the nation. 
For decades, the nonprofit that built the wall, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund, has been creating on its website a virtual version of the memorial called the Wall of Faces. We've been working for 21 years to find a photograph for everyone on the wall. Tim Tates admits they never thought it possible to find a picture of everyone. To have any chance at completing this monumental task, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund called on volunteers from across the country to help them find these pictures. Andrew Johnson stepped forward for a very personal reason. As a gold star dad, I, I, I wanted to do something, but you know, what do you do to, to, to deal with your, your loss? Johnson's son, David, a base commander in Kandahar province, was killed in Afghanistan in 2012 by an IED. When the helicopter landed at the air base, he, he was gone. Johnson was perfectly positioned to find photos being a newspaper publisher at the time. He reached out to media outlets across his state of Wisconsin, even college journalism students for help. In only a year, they completed the Wall of Faces for Wisconsin. In total, Johnson estimates he spent another few years helping track down thousands of additional pictures. All those thousands and thousands of names, but they're not just names. These are real people, and each of them has a story. And then the news no one expected. Earlier this week, the final photo was found. Frankie Lee Smiley from Florida, the last picture to complete the wall of faces. It was awesome. I'm glad we could honor them and got, I'm glad there was one picture for each of them and, and, and there should be, and I'm glad that that was done. So the next time you go to the wall, know that there's now a picture and a story for each name you pass. That was Jay Corf reporting. Time now, 842, 78 degrees out. All right, still to come, a thunder sound rattles parts of Utah, but meteorologists say it wasn't thunder. What they say had residents looking up to the sky. Outer space. <laughs> Alien. Okay. <laughs> Just leading you up to the plate. Far reach. <laughs> Time now, 842, 78 degrees out. Taking a live look out there. Oof. Will we see rain? Maybe. We're going to check in with Mike in just a bit. Mar-a-Lago, raided by the FBI. Top secret document seized. Trump under criminal investigation. Republicans rally. What's next? Plus, Biden's big wins. Gas prices falling. How will it impact the midterms? The new White House press secretary, one-on-one, -on -one, today on ABC's This Week. Well, Utah residents took to social media to find out what caused an extremely loud boom that was heard in the area. Do you want to give us your theory? Aliens. I'm, so I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there reportedly had been some storms in that area, but officials with the National Weather Service, it wasn't thunder. Mike's in the background saying that's not thunder. Home security <laughs> videos from northern Utah and southern Idaho, they captured the boom. You see it right there at the top of your screen. The state's governor tweeted about the shocking sound, writing, not an earthquake, not military related. So if you can see on that video, right at the top of your screen above that cloud, meteorologists say it appears it was a meteor. Their best theory is that it fell from a high altitude and then blew up when it hit the atmosphere. Crazy. They even shared a radar image that seemed to show a meteor's trail. Mike, what's your theory? Well, I mean, it's just, it looks like it. Yeah. A meteor, obviously more than that than just a uh, space junk. And yeah, when they, they hit the atmosphere and blow up, and obviously they're traveling faster than the sound barrier, so they, you know, may create somewhat of a sonic boom, too. So. Cool. But. Science. Mm-hmm. <laughs> space. Space. <laughs> Mike, do you have any science when it comes to the weather? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Uh, <laughs> took some classes a couple of years ago. Anyway, beautiful picture. Speaking of space, the moon right there over Lake Travis. Absolutely gorgeous. And uh, some folks, especially up to the north, well, this morning I saw a nice, uh, the moon was still up prior to uh, setting. By the way, two days past the uh, full moon phase, which was the full sturgeon moon. Folks down in the south, you're not going to be seeing any sunrises or moon rises or anything like that anytime soon with all of this rain around here. The center of that uh, low is just about right there, say around Kingsville, and it has been dumping just a ton, a ton of rain. Now, further up to the north, obviously lesser amounts, got some of these showers in Victoria, as well as right there around Beeville, and uh, further up to the north, nothing around here. But as this continues, 
to work its way straight to the west. We are going to see some of these kind of sweeping around through here. So let's kind of cut the area in half right around 90 and 10 south of there. You know, here in town, maybe a 30% chance for a couple of showers. Obviously, that will increase the further south you go up to the north. Pretty much nothing. Uh, it's going to be high and dry. 84 at 10 o'clock, 87, 11 o'clock, and then we'll start to up the chances for some rain. Obviously, showers down to the south this morning, and then we're going to be topping off today mid 90. So at least we will have some extra clouds around here. That's going to help out to keep the temperatures down. Thank goodness, because we're going to have a lot of humidity left over today. So here's computer model. And again, as that continues to work its way to the west, we get some of these showers sweeping on in the area. Just one or two of them. Otherwise, just a, a bunch of clouds hanging around here, and this will be the situation throughout the rest of today. So even uh, as far north as say Atascosa County, southern portion of the county, you have a better chance of seeing some of those showers, not drought breakers, obviously down to the south. Um, I don't know if that's going to be technically a drought breaker, but boy, oh boy, you're going to be getting a whole bunch of rain and that will move off obviously into the uh, the Rio Grande by tomorrow. And as far as some rainfall potential less than a quarter of an inch of rain or that's even being generous I think in portions of the hill country and then further to the south up to about an inch again southern portions of Atascosa County and then further to the south two to five inches but some areas have already seen about five six seven inches of rain certain little bullseyes and then that will continue to be the case like I said in toward the Rio Grande tomorrow 89 at noon today Couple of showers, obviously the rain down to the south right now, and then 94 showers, few thunderstorms, heaviest down to the south, and that will continue to move over to the southwest and to the west as we progress on through the overnight hours and then tomorrow. Uh, might want to leave just a little extra early tomorrow, even here in town, just to take into or set your alarm a little extra early, just to take into account a couple of showers in the morning, and then a 30% chance of rain in the afternoon. Obviously heavier down to the uh, southwest uh, leftover shower Tuesday. Uh, possibility then Wednesday, Thursday. One that we're going to be upper 90 is going to be close to 100. Obviously, and that's very dependent on the clouds hanging around here because we're not going to see any good soaking rain in town, so it'll heat up very easily. A couple of showers then are possible. There's actually I hate to use this word a front, which is going to be moving into the northern portion of the state. It's not going to come down here. It's not going to blast in cold air or anything like that, but it should kind of keep things kind of stirred up just enough toward the latter part of the uh, the week to give us one or two showers. So far, has August been cooler than July? Well, we've had, you know, I haven't crunched all the numbers yet, but I think, but overall we have been on the above normal side. Uh -huh. uh, normal so far this month has been 97 degrees. Every day has been a, above normal. Um, we had those couple of 103s thrown in there as well. So we haven't had just all triple digit temperatures, but we've still been above normal so far this month. Okay. It's hot. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mike. Time now, 851, 79 degrees out. All right, coming up tomorrow in GMSA, following the many tragedies that hit close to home, parents are wondering how they can help their child understand the world around them. That's why tomorrow, hear from experts that say parents must take care of their own mental health first so they can be the best version for their child. We have some late breaking news. According to the Associate Press, around 4 o'clock this morning, a man drove a car into a barricade of the U.S. Capitol, began firing a gun into the air before turning the gun on himself and killing himself. That's right. Right now, the Capitol Police saying that no other injuries reported. They're going to continue to investigate the situation, and D.C. police are going to handle the majority of that. So just stay with us on air and online for those updates. All right, Mike, here's the last check of the weather. And uh, heavy, heavy rain well down to the south. Most of that will stay down to the south. 30% uh, chance for a shower storm around here. High today of 94, very humid. Thank All you, right. Mike. That was a really quick check. Thank yeah. you for joining us this yeah. Always a pleasure. Sunday, Mike. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Happy Sunday.